Today in Beale, we witnessed, I can honestly say, one of the most extraordinary games that has ever been played in tournament chess. A game between David Navarra and Radislav Wojtasek. Let's crack on and see what happened. So, Wojtasek played his Nidorf variation. That could be predicted by Navarra and he came fully prepared for this game. So it's a bishop e3 variation. e5, that's my favourite move with black. You put a pawn in the middle of the board, contest the centre. Now h3. So this is a very respectable continuation and a little bit different from f3. After g4, it means that you can still play bishop g2 and there's no pawn on f3 blocking the bishop. d5. Well, this is an excellent counter to g4. You break in the centre, and the point is that with no pawn on f3, after these exchanges, then, for example, after the exchange here, then when black recaptures, the rook is actually threatened in the corner. So, for that reason, white has to play bishop g2, But there's a problem with this, that black can now take off that important dark squared bishop. Navarra exchanged queens. And Wojtacek said after the game that he vaguely remembered analysing this continuation a few years ago and thought this was satisfactory for black. And it is. But Navarra had prepared this in extraordinary detail. Just look what happens. First of all, knight c5. In some ways this is a very forcing continuation. So black has to be a bit careful here because you can see that bishop has influence on the long diagonal down to b7 through c6 and this knight threatens to take a bishop possibly and is also attacking b7. So bishop c4 check. This is very logical. And because white's king is kind of wandering around here, then and black has the two bishops, black should be fine. Castles, very logical move, protecting b7, and it seems that, that black should be fine. But now it gets a bit tricky. It's very forcing. b3. Well, obviously that bishop doesn't want to return to e6, where the knight can take it and really damage the pawn structure. So bishop g5 threatening to take on e3 with check and then take on c5. So rook e1. And now black's only decent move is to attack the rook. Well the rook moves away. This is actually very important that the rook goes to b1 and not repeating that rook, as we'll see later, is very well placed on b1. Everything fits together. So bishop g5, still a forced move from black. And then the king comes up. So rook d2 check wouldn't be so clever here. Then the king, king goes up to g3. So bishop h4 check. Of course, if white wants to draw, he can come back to g1, but Navarra had, played, had prepared something extraordinary. Well, already this looks pretty mad to put the king in front of the bishop, but there is still a problem with the bishop on c4. And here Wojtaszek could have played something relatively safe. He could have played bishop d5 check. And after this exchange, well, the knight comes back to e4. He thought that with the knight on e4, white should be slightly better. But you know, it's, it's a very nice piece. But still, it's a safe way for black to play. But Wojtaszek, well, he played the game in the right spirit. Now, if this is taken, then black is fine. The point is you check here and, well, you have at least a draw. It's probably just a draw, actually after this, after king f3 and knight e5 check. But Navarra pressed on, king f4. 
Again, there are various ways for black to play this, and Navarro mentioned off the game rook d6, f5. But Wojtacek played in the spirit of the game and forced the king forward. I mean, this is just absolutely crazy. Rook e8, threatening rook e5 check. Um, well, in fact, if this is if the bishop is taken, then rook d6 and rook e5 is going to be mate. So white has to play rook d1 to stop that rook attacking. And now the king goes forward again. It, it reminds me of um, some army commander striding out over no man's land, dodging shells and bullets like some complete madman. Navarro was playing all his moves instantly. Wojtaszek was over an hour behind on the clock. You know, if you're not familiar with with this, then you need to think it all through because obviously you you know you're giving up material. Rookie seven, but actually up till here, Wojtaszek has played this perfectly. You know, there were alternatives, safer alternatives. But there's nothing wrong with how he's playing. The king hits the 8th rank. Incredible. And now if, if black wants a draw, then he could play rook g7. And it seems that um, white has, has to acquiesce to the draw after rook, rook g8 and rook g7. But again, Wojtaszek, well, he played in the you know, a great spirit actually, great fighting spirit. He kept going. Okay, king f8 should be a draw. But Navarra played king h8. This is absolutely extraordinary. Now, at first, I was thinking during the game that bishop g3 should be an incredibly strong move, threatening bishop e5 and mate, but. Remarkably, it looks as though this is actually better for white. You give up the rook. This still looks incredibly dangerous with, with a knight and two rooks attacking the king. But remarkably, this move saves white. That's why white succeeded, well, brought the rook to b1. And after this, everything hangs together. Because in this position, it's check. And then you take the rook, and white has a winning endgame. Extraordinary. This is computer preparation for you. Having said that, Navarra actually had said after the game that here he was kind of winging it. He was he was on his own. Wojtaszek thought that he was fine after this move, rook f6. Threatening mate, and he'd assumed that the king would come back and they would make a draw. He had underestimated this move, rook f1. Bishop f2 from black, again. We have a threat of mate with rook f8. But white takes. And rook f1. This is the move that Wojtaszek had underestimated. He thought he would be okay after rook takes bishop. But then comes a check. And knight d5 check. In fact, this may be even stronger, but Navarro said after the game, well, he couldn't see a clear way forward here. He is the exchange down. In fact, it looks as though these knights are simply too strong and white is going to take loads of pawns. Instead, Navarro made a very practical decision simply to take the material back. He took the exchange back. He'd underestimated the counterplay that black has in this rook and pawn endgame. Okay, first a check, and then white takes this pawn on g5. White is obviously better here. Black is fighting for a draw. The king, well, it's not out of play. In fact, it can actually help with the supporting the pawns moving down the board. So we're going to have a race in this position. White is going to have a couple of pawns supported by king and rook. 
black has to try to take that pawn on e3 and push his own passed pawn. And he should be able to do this. I mean, Wojciech was short of time. One possible way to do this is rook takes c2. And after the king takes the pawn, the king comes in. And he'd missed this move in his calculations. He thought this was too dangerous. For example, after rook g2, g6, but he'd overlooked rook c5. Navarro had actually seen this move. And both players agreed after the game that they, the game should end in a draw. Instead, rook g3 was played, which is probably good enough, but it is incredibly tricky. So they'd reached move 40, and now Navarro thought for, I think, half an hour here. And, you know, he calculated a great deal, and he succeeded in tricking Wojtaszek. With best play, it looks like this should still be a draw, but it's, it's very, very difficult. So Navarra brought the king back. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is incredible. So it's journeyed all the way up the board, and now it comes, comes down again. There you go, marched up the hill, and then marched right, right down again. Um, King takes e3, so the king comes back, and this is very clever. <clears throat> Wojciech thought he was still okay after king d5. It seems that king c3, supporting that e-pawn, is the way to go. Uh, but, I mean, this involves an extraordinary amount of calculation. It, it's really not obvious, but this is the basic idea. And you give up the rook, um, but incredibly, it seems as though you know black can get back and and draw this position. For example, I mean there are many ways to play this, but anyway, in this position, it looks like king c3 is the move. King d5 is now looking critical. So the king has come right back again. And here, well, again a blunder. E2 is the last chance, but C5 loses to Rook G5 and Rook E5. A very nice move. And now there's no defence to Rook E4 check. And Rook takes pawn, and therefore White wins easily. I mean, you could spend uh, weeks and weeks looking at this game and not get, not explore all the variations. That was just a very rough sketch, but what extraordinary calculation from Navarro. And I should say, although he'd prepared this game, from a certain moment, really when the king was way up the board, he was winging it and still had to calculate an extraordinary amount. This was is his real strength. Look out for um, my interview with him. You can find, find that on the uh, Powerplay Chess YouTube channel. And, uh, well, he says some remarkable things about this game. Thanks for watching.